Hello everyone, welcome to today's brand new Pika 1.0 Quick Start Tutorial. Pika is not just an AI video production tool, it's a platform that unleashes creative potential and opens up endless possibilities. In this tutorial, I will guide you step by step on how to use Pika. As the all new web UI and highly creative video features provide a perfect cinematic experience. First, we open a web browser and click on the Pika official website. Use the account you've already registered to log in, and then we officially enter the home page of Pika 1.0. In this tutorial, I will provide a detailed introduction to all the features of Pika 1.0. First, let's look at the control panel button. The first one is video options. Among them, aspect ratio allows you to change the aspect ratio of the video. Below that, we have frames per second which lets you change the frame rate of the video, ranging from 8 to 24 frames per second. Next, let's move on to motion control. The first one is camera control, which controls the movement of the camera in any direction. Then we have strength of motion, which controls the intensity of motion in the video. Moving on to the third button, the first one is negative prompt, which allows you to filter out scenes you don't want to see in the video. The second one is seed, which is a seed file that can be used to continue generating video based on your original footage. Finally, there's consistency with the text, which adjusts the relevance of prompts. The higher the number, the greater the relevance to the provided text. Next, we click on the top menu, My Library. All video production will take place on this page. Click on the text box, enter your prompts. Here, I'm entering Pixar animation style, a boy walking down the street, and then click Generate. You can see that the video has already started generating. At this point, you can click retry multiple times, and it will generate multiple videos with the same prompts. Now the video has been generated. Click Preview. Choose a frame you like to continue your creative work. If you don't like any, please continue clicking the Retry button. In this tutorial, I will demonstrate using the first frame. You can see that at this position, there are the prompts you just wrote. Click the Copy button to copy all the prompts. Click the Reprompt button to rewrite the prompts. Click the Edit button to make modifications based on this frame. Click Modify Region to select the area you want to modify and enter the content you want to change. Please note, the selected area must be consistent throughout the entire video, and you cannot delete the selected part. You can only replace objects or content. You also cannot select a blank area to generate an entirely new object or content. For example, if you want to make the boy in the frame wear sunglasses, simply input the prompt sunglasses and click the Generate button. You can see that the character in the frame is now wearing sunglasses. Next, we move on to Expand Canvas. Here, there are six aspect ratio options to choose from. It's worth noting that adjusting the aspect ratio requires you to have a rough idea in mind beforehand, otherwise the expanded frame may appear dissonant. Of course, you can also make the frame smaller first, and then expand it. The frame I'm showing here is the result of starting from 16 to 9 to 1 1 and then expanding it twice. Moving on to the fourth expansion option, you can see there are two choices add 4 seconds and upscale. Let's start with add 4 seconds. You can see that a prompt for adding 4 seconds has appeared on the control panel. It's important to note that in the subsequent frames, you can change its video parameters, including frame size, aspect ratio, motion intensity, and negative prompts. Once you've selected your parameters, click the Generate button. In this demonstration, I won't add any additional parameters, so the video will intelligently extend its length based on the original video content. You can see that the video duration has now reached 7 seconds. Importantly, we can see all the information and parameters of each generated video in each frame. The current frame's operations and video source are displayed in the top left corner. Clicking the button in the bottom right corner displays various parameters for the video, including frame rate, motion intensity, text attachment level, and seed number. Now, let's move on to the second option, Upscale. Clicking this button will reduce noise and increase contrast in the frame, making it appear clearer. You can see the operation performed at the top. From the comparison between the demonstration and the original frame, you can see that the image quality is improved after upscaling and the colors are more vivid. Next, I will demonstrate how to use the video to video generation feature. First, choose a video you like. I've selected a video of a man walking as a demonstration. 
In real-world videos, we can transform the appearance or color of objects or people in the frame, or even change the entire style of the video. For example, in the prompt text box, I'll enter Van Gogh Artistic Style, and then click the Generate button. The entire video will be transformed to resemble the style of Van Gogh. As you can see from the demonstration, this results in a video with a distinct Van Gogh artistic style. Of course, apart from changing the overall style of the video, we can also select specific subjects for localized modifications. Here we'll make the person in the frame wear an Iron Man helmet. In the demonstration video, you can see that Pika has made a localized modification to the person's head in this frame. Additionally, we can change clothing colors or even the gender of the character. Today's Pika 1.0 Quick Start Guide ends here. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions about Pika or want to learn more, please leave a comment or visit our official website at pika.art.